going to be painting for the second time this cup of coffee. It's a latte, actually, to be more accurate. And I pulled this reference photo from Pixabay. It looks like this. And what I did is I just took it on Photoshop and I enlarged it and printed it out. When I printed it, I printed it in black and white, both so that I wouldn't use the color ink on my printer. And because sometimes it's easier to see the value changes when it's in black and white. So I'm going to trace this out. I've taped it to my watercolor block so that I can pick it up and still lay it back down. And I have graphite paper underneath. So I am just going to trace this out. If you would like to skip tracing, then I will put a timestamp in the description that will tell you when I get to actually painting. Okay. I'm not too worried about the outer part of the The rim being dark, although that's probably a little darker than I want. I'll lighten that up. <clears throat> but as I get to some of these other details, I'm going to be a lot more gentle in my pressure because I don't actually want these lines to be very dark at all. Remember, watercolor is transparent, and if you have dark lines, they will show through your painting. So I want this to be pretty faint, particularly since I'm working on a white object here. All right now I need the interior of the coffee cup. I want kind of a little bit of the design. I'm not going to be super careful about that. Just kind of want the general placement of some of these lines. helps me as I'm painting to keep the right kind of the, the flow of the coffee in the direction if I can see where the lines go. Okay, that's probably enough. All right, now I have some shadows here and here with the hole kind of showing there. I'm gonna keep that light. And I have the shadow of the spoon going here. Now, I also have some white shadows here because the bowl is curved. The spoon is the trickiest part of this whole painting. And so I'm gonna carefully Trace out the spoon, got a light section here, got a break in this section here with the highlight along the edge. It's a little lighter there. We've got a reflection coming on here. Trace out the brim of the spoon. And there's this kind of circular section here. There's a highlight here. 
this light section. There's a little bit there, and this is light little bits. There's a drip on the spoon here. I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to put that on. I'm just going to leave that off. All right, let's have a look. All right, I think that gives me the important parts of this <clears throat> painting. I'm gonna take that off. And then I'm gonna take my kneadable eraser that I have here. I'm gonna get rid of have some extra marks up there and there. I can hide some of those. And I want to lighten this rim. It's darker than I really meant for it to be. So I'm going to go around and lighten that. Okay. I can lighten some of these a little bit. These lines are a little bit darker than I need them to be. <clears throat> I just need to be able to see them so that I can be in the right place. This one's a bit dark. Lighten him up too. Make sure I don't lose the, <laughs> the lines I do need though. Okay. That's better. All right, so now I have a outline. Now I'm gonna get to work on this. All right, so. I've actually painted this this cup of coffee once already, but I felt like the way I painted the coffee, I felt like I could do it better. So I'm gonna give it a shot this time. The first time I painted it wet on dry, and I feel like it was too, like the lines were too precise. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna paint the coffee part wet on wet. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to wet just the section where the actual coffee is in this painting. And it may be that I don't like this, we'll just see. It's all an experiment, it's just a piece of paper. Keeping the rim of the coffee cup dry because I don't want to paint that right now. I'm just wetting where the actual coffee would be. And if you can't tell if your paper is wet or not, you can look at it to the side. Put your head to the side where you can see the glares and then you can usually tell where it might need some more water. Okay, you don't want pools of water, you just want it wet all the way across. All right, the first time I got annoyed because I felt like my painting lost a lot of the light colors in it, the green. You can see in here, there's a fair bit of light and I was losing that. So this time I'm gonna come in, this is a mixture of Quinn Gold and a little bit of burnt sienna, okay? I feel like there was a lot of yellow tone to this painting with where the cream is and stuff, except for like this white section right here. It was pretty white, but like even in here, there was a lot of yellow to the cream. So I'm gonna add that light color first this time. The last time I did this, I started with the dark streaks and then I blended the dark streaks into the, um, the light sections and it worked okay, but I lost a lot of that light color and I was just not happy with that. So that's 
Well, it's good to know different techniques and go, okay, let's, let's try this a different way. All right. So I've got that kind of cream layer done here. Now, I'm going to take, uh, this is the mixture I was using for the coffee before. This is some Van Dyke Brown and some Burnt Sienna because I felt like this particular picture had a real reddish tone to the coffee portion. So Van Dyke Brown and some Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to put in these darker sections. I'm going to start with the ones that are um, less defined, I guess is what I want. Here. Here. Just make a big swipe here. I want to start fairly light and then I can continue to darken these tones but I want the light tones first okay that's a little darker in here don't want to lose this kind of heart shape that is in here because that's kind of the fun of that latte is that it creates that heart shape. Keep referring back to my picture because I want to see where these different lines go. There are lots of small lines coming through here. Again, I was mad at myself last time because I lost the dark, I mean the light. So I'm trying hard here not to lose the light. But I do have to get darker tones going in here too. So it's kind of a it's a play to try to get dark tones, get good contrast going on here, but not totally lose your light creamy tones. My hope was that in working wet on wet like this, that a lot of the harder lines I was seeing would kind of blend out naturally without me having to work them very much.
switch to a liner brush because I can make longer strokes with it. Let's see if that helps me here to, to do some of these lines. All right, and go back to a bigger brush and I'm getting a little darker of a coffee color and I'm going to put another layer on some of these dark areas. My paper is still damp. It's not super wet anymore, but it is still damp. So this is still going to spread. But not as much as it might if it was like wet. wet. That is my parrot. He is noisy. Okay, I'm taking just water here. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of that Quinn Gold because I want some more of that yellowy color. But I'm going to blend that edge a bit here. That might be a little more yellowy than I wanted, but. I think I will let it um, dry and see then. All right, just water with a little bit of the yellow. That 
Come in here. Lost that really light section again. I'm talented at losing my light. There it is. Just pick it back up. Alright. I'm liking this. I think it still needs some darker sections. So I'm going to take some Van Dyke Brown with a little bit of sepia. And let's see. Along this top area there's like this is actually a shadow over the edge of the cup. So there's a dark section here. Because of the rim of the cup. So that actually should be quite dark. Just pulling in mainly mainly sepia there to create that okay and then got sepia van dyke brown and um and some of the yeah burnt sienna that's what i'm trying to get to here Let's see. This is a little too perfectly lined. So let's fade that a little bit. And I think this is too distinctly white there. There. So 
white. quite a few more lines that go through here. this. Uh, let's see, what I did on the other one that I also liked was I took my chisel blender and I dropped some little flex across it. So I need to cover up the white part of my paper really really useful if I had like a circle <laughs> but I don't okay so I'll cover that up and I want to get some fairly dark paint that's nice and wet okay and then in the areas that I want my flex I just sort of run my finger across like that and it's gonna put some little dots across it. I look at the reference photo. There were little dots from bubbles and um, just little areas where the coffee sort of settled in one place. And if you have any of them that you don't like, then you can just take a wet brush and get rid of them quite easily. That gives it a nice natural look. All right, I'm going to let that dry before I move on to anything else. All right. My coffee is dry now, so I think I could approach this two ways. I could go ahead and do the white areas, or I could go ahead and do the spoon, and then do the white areas. The spoon is probably the trickiest part of this painting. So I might go ahead and do that. So, when you look at this spoon, you have to learn to really look at it because if I just asked someone what color is this spoon, they would probably tell you it's silver. But if you look at the spoon, it's not silver, okay? This is a really dark gray. This is a light gray, almost white. This is gray. Here we have some reflections that are reflecting like the outside. There must be a window and these are green. Um, here in this black, there's some lighter areas that are almost purpley. And here I've got a dark gray, black, right? It's, it's not silver. Yes, I know that the actual spoon is silver, but you have to learn to really look at the object and see what makes it up, okay? So I'm gonna start off this spoon by mapping out some of the darkest sections of it. I think I'm gonna use Moon Glow because when I looked at it, it has almost a little bit of a purpley undertone. 
So if I start with Moon Glow, that'll give me more of that purpley look. And I can always come back with Neutral Tint and darken up the parts that I want to be even darker. Although Moon Glow can get pretty dark if you want it to. So we've got the spoon here. And it's really dark along this edge. Trying to get a fairly smooth edge. As it gets close to this, it's almost like there's a center. There probably is on this spoon, like a, a ridge down the center of it. Because I can see a little bit of a, a different reflection there. I may try to show that. I may not. Sometimes you... Sometimes in painting, there are details that you decide are extraneous and you decide, you know what, that's not important, I'm going to leave it off. All right, the light comes around the corner of this And while it's dark, there's almost like a little bit of a lighter section here and along this edge. So, I'm just thinking that through. I think for that ridge, I'm going to try to leave just a thin, really thin white line here. That comes down that ridge. And then after it's dry... I'll go back in with water and I will go over that line to make it not so distinct. And I'll see if that gives it the look I want. The thing with watercolor here is you always want to start on the light side of what you want. It's easy to make something darker. It's a whole lot harder to lighten it up later. So if I think, oh, this section might want to be kind of light, then I can make it really light to start with. And I can always go back in and add more color. And you can take away color to some extent, but it's much more of a process than adding color is. It's really missing. I'm going to want this whole section quite a bit darker than what I have it right now. But just sort of getting it started. I want it a bit lighter there. But this area, I want to be darker. And along this back edge, too. Because that almost rounds back. So this is lighter because it's kind of rounded up just a little bit. Like the spoon turns like that. So you've got a little bit of a glare. Keep darkening this again. Just I'm still leaving that really thin line in the middle. And see, the good thing with doing this with that thin line is if I decide, nope, I don't like that line there, then when I'm done, I can just go back over it with a dark color and I can make it disappear. So it's not like I've 
locked myself into anything by leaving it there. I just kind of think it'll show that that central line of the spoon a little bit. I think as I get to the the stem here, I don't see it anymore. I really only see it maybe till about here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in from here. I only really want it up there. It probably still exists on the spoon, but not as much. You know, they, they like to make little decorative parts on the handle part of the spoon. Okay, so the dark part of the spoon comes right up here. I'm going to pick up a smaller brush. This is a zero. And still working with the dark color, but there is a line, a little bitty line that comes down here. That's dark on here. This is almost a little more pointy. Let's bring that down a little bit. All right. Back to my two round. There's this area of the spoon that's also very dark. Curves like this. Comes right around. Although this center part is a little lighter than the other part. So like in here, I might take that color and kind of spread it out a little bit more. We'll go right up along what the edge of the cup will be. This comes up here. To about here. like a little tiny
I get my little bitty brush again. Still working with Moon Glow. <clears throat> and okay, so this comes down around here. This little glare. There's a very good line that comes down this way around both of these glares. Like that. But then there is a white line and then another dark line. So there's like this white glare here. I try very hard here to preserve. You could put it back in with like a gouache, but I'm trying. I generally try not to use gouache, if at all possible, and to just use the white of the paper. Not that there's anything wrong with using gouache, it's just my preference is not to have to. I feel like in some ways it's a little bit of a cheat sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's absolutely necessary, like if I do whiskers, then I definitely use gouache. This line should come like almost to a point. There we go. Okay. Up here, interestingly, When it comes up here, but then it turns. Sometimes these tiny lines are so hard to do. Like that. And on this top part, it comes off that way too. Another direction here. Not wet enough. Hopefully you're starting to kind of see the spoon a little bit there. All right. There are these very interesting glares on this um, that are like reflections. And they're obviously reflecting like a tree or something in a window, which I think is really cool. So I am going to put those in. Like I said, there's a drop on the spoon, and I'm leaving that off. When I painted it the last time I painted this, and I just felt like it looked weird. So, now I'm leaving it off. Working on these little reflective areas. some some gray in them too and they're sort of defined a little bit so trying to kind of define them without being super defined more water in there than I wanted okay. sort of like a little just a 
little smudge there. And this one down here needs some more like darkness in it. This right here, this side of this glare blends right into the dark. So I need to use just water and come down here with some light. I'm going to pull just a little bit of Moon Glow to keep just a light color here. But there is completely white glare like right there. Try to keep that. All right, this should be dry now. So let me go ahead and go over this line. Because what I wanted with this was just more the hint that there was a detail there, not like an obvious bright line. We'll look at that more once it's dry. I want this area oops, to be just a light gray. Come down there just with a really light gray. Alright, this is like a really bright light. And it is truly wet. So, to some extent, I'm going to leave that alone and not mess with it because it's just a really bright glare hitting that spoon. But I feel like <clears throat> up here above this little detail mark it could use to be darker and put another layer of darker color there. All right. All right, let's see, where else do we have little details? This uh, area, it's got like a medium got like these little concentric rings going on so here there's like a medium ring and then a light one and then another medium one closer to the dark in the middle Okay, and then this glare, I'm going to pick up my little teeny for this. It's got some little lines through it, like this. And it gets darker as we get over to this side. So, I'm going to add more color over here and then I'm going to blend up so that I keep the top part of it fairly light. And then I can go back and put some darker lines in if I want to. Here, I've got kind of this little dark section there, 
in there, but otherwise this is just sort of like a little floral. much lighter and there's a fairly distinct line here. Okay. Now there is this this part of the spoon is gray. It's not bright white except for a couple little accent areas. <clears throat> So I'm going to go ahead and it needs to be a really light gray. So I'm going to spread this color. I'm leaving these little accent bits here. <clears throat> and there's a distinct, like, there's light here, and then that's showing the curve of the spoon. But I want to keep the light, so I'm taking a fairly dry brush, and I'm just going along that light area to lift up and create that line. times what I do here is I stand up and I look at it from a ways away and I go all right am I seeing what I want to see or I look at it on my phone and I look for you know what what is it that I am missing here and I think I want to see a little more of a blend in this I'm going to blend this in just a bit more. And this is a little too even. So I'm going to kind of make it a little less even. All right. I feel like this line is still too distinct. I don't want it quite so obvious. So I'm going to go over it again with a bit of paint. I really want it like just barely there. Okay. Look at it from a little ways away again, and I think that looks more like what I want to see. It's pretty good, really. Pretty happy with that. All right, I'm going to move on for now. Let's look at the cup and the bowl. All right, I'm going to be pulling... I could work with neutral tint. I could work with Payne's Gray to do this. Uh, I think I'm going to pull Payne's Gray to do with my shadows on my cup. So as I look at the reference photo, you notice there's a shadow on the outside of the cup here, like halfway around. 
but not so much when you get to this side. And there's also this heavy shadowing on the handle and a little bit here. And then we need to shadow under the handle so that it shows that it's separate from the rest. And then we have some shadows on the spoon right there and on the back part of the cup. So that's what we're gonna work on here. So I'm taking my Payne's Gray, and again, if you start light, then you can always come back and darken it up. I know that doesn't look light, but I'm gonna go back now with just water and I'm going to blend that out. Like so. So you see now that looks more like the rounded edge of the cup. I do more. I'm only doing this in parts because if you let that gray dry too much, it'll get it'll be difficult to blend out and you'll end up with a hard line there. And I do not want a hard line on this side. I don't mind the hard line on the outside of the mug. But I don't want it going towards the inside. And to me, the, the shadow that's dark on this goes to about there. So I'm going to continue around. If your circle wasn't very round, <laughs> it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can smooth it some as you're doing this outline. Okay, and then I'm pulling just a little bit of that color around here. I'm not going to paint anymore because I want the heavier circle here, but this is literally just of pulling that and having a little bit of water on my brush. You can see here on this side, I can pull just a little bit of color around here. Okay. All right, now this area that's on the inside of the cup, that's a little darker on my reference photo than what I have here. So I'm gonna take some sepia and I'm gonna add just a little bit of that Payne's Gray to it to darken it up even more. And I'm gonna come around that on the inside. And then I'm just going to take water and blend that into the coffee. Okay. I want to shape the handle. the handle. There is a dark, I'm going to go pretty dark with this one because it's pretty dark on the reference photo. There's a dark shadow along this edge of the handle. I'm going to lay that down. Pretty dark. And then I'm going to go back with just water and I'm going to blend it out. And when blending dark colors, you'll notice that I clean off my brush a lot. And that's because it picks up a lot of that color 
and I want the colors to get closer and closer to the light. So I have to keep doing that or else it wouldn't blend. All right, like so. And then there's, this is the inside of that Little finger, you know, where you stick your finger in. Little hole. It's pretty light on this, so I'm not gonna darken that a lot. I just want it to be there. Okay, like so. Now it looks like a handle. Very good. All right, so we still have shadowing the bowl, putting the shadow on the fork, putting the shadows behind the cup here. Still working with Payne's Gray. I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, there's kind of like, you know, the bowl has a rim. It, it curves down here. And so there's a shadow, particularly on this side of the bowl because of the way the light's hitting it to show that there is like a depression here. So I'm going to lay that down and then I am going to blend it out. I'm going to blend it on both sides. I don't want that hard line. No, it, would, it does not show that in the picture. I just want it to be darkest there where the depression in the bowl would be deepest. And then I want the shadow to blend out otherwise. Okay. And the same over here. Continues this way. Now, there is a shadow here where the spoon, spoon's shadow is falling. So I'm going to fill that in, had it drawn in, and I am going to blend the edges because although some shadows do have really distinct lines, this one does not on my reference photo. So I'm going to blend out the edges. But it is darker up here because the bowl like curves down on that edge. So you have like a really dark section of the shadow there. The rest is a lot lighter. But it is still a obvious shadow here. So I don't want to blend it out too much. Okay. All right. And there's also a shadow of the entire mug happening, particularly like here, it starts there. This is like the circle of the handle. And then there's a lighter section there where the handle's open. And then all of this through here is pretty dark. So 
bring that in. And then there's like medium dark shadow over here. It's lighter and it fades to nothing. Again, I don't really want a hard line on that. So to... All right, last, one of the main last steps here is I'm going to make the background of this. I'm going to do that by going around and then I'm going to take some of like this coffee color and drop it in there and I want it just a little messy, a little thrown in, maybe sort of like, oops, we dropped something on the counter here. I'm mainly doing this because I feel like with a white bowl on there that it needs a background of some sort. This kind of loose, watery background appeals to me, so it works. Alright, just basically going to continue that all the way around.
stepping back a bit here. I'm looking at this to just see what else I might need to do to it. I feel like there should be just a little bit of a shadow here to continue that line, but lighter than the other side. So I'm just going to keep a little bit of a light shadow there. It just seems too too white to me. Also, underneath that, that handle, there should have been a little bit of a shadow. And I'm just using extremely pale gray here, okay? This is just really light. If you want to, on this section, you can do some splatters. Uh, splatters are often fun, but you don't want necessarily to splatter on your... Look at that. I carried a little over into there. I think that's okay. It's like some coffee got spilled. Um, you don't want to splatter on this, is what I was going to say. So I'm going to cover up all of the white area and then I can do this. Just kind of hitting my brush against my finger and that gives me some little splatters. And that's cool. I don't, well, I could do a few on the other side too. Let's just put a few right over here, covering again all the white and then just, just a little bit. All right, I am pretty happy with this now. The one thing is I feel there could be a little more warmth in the coffee. And so I'm just taking a little bit of that Quinn Gold and a little bit of Burnt Sienna. I'm taking a very light wash of this. You can see in my palette here, this is what I've pulled out. It's just a light wash. And I'm just going to go into some of these areas and just add another layer for that warmth. I don't want these to look like cool colors. I want them because in the picture there it's a very yellowy red warm palette that I'm seeing. So I want to replicate that. the white there that warmed it up a little bit could even take just a bit heavier burnt sienna to some of these browns I'm not going to repaint this whole thing. I'm just adding a little bit of another layer for vibrancy. And you have to do that sometimes with watercolors. Just a little bit more of a wash there. Gives it that extra bit. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. I hope you learned something from this. I hope it was helpful and enjoy.